Hello everybody, I'm gonna show you how to create editor tools in Godot like a pro. So Godot 4.5 has this new feature where you can run your editor scripts from this command palette here. But a lot of people don't know how to write editor scripts or editor tools. And so what I'm gonna do is gonna show you kind of a contrived example of how to actually create a tool. And then I will bring you into my game Alchemortis and show you how I'm using such tools to improve my ability to develop my game. So an editor tool is essentially a script that you can write that will run in the editor. So you don't need to run the game, you don't need to run a scene, you can just fire off the script and that script will do exactly as you've created it to do. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a script for it. Now what I would typically do is create a new folder in my project and call it something like tools. You can do whatever you want, the organization doesn't matter that much. But I'm going to create a new script inside of here and we're going to keep it as a GD script and I'm just going to call this tool example. Again, the naming is not that important. You can name it whatever you want. And so we've got this tool example here that I can open up. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we want this to extend editor script like so. And we're also going to want to give this a class name. So we're going to call this class name tool example. And let's also give it the at tool annotation. And so now we've got this basic setup. The way that we initialize the tool script is we actually need to override the run function. So if we do func run, then what we can do in here is we can do anything that you would expect to be able to do. So I could do a print statement and I could do hello world. Now, if I hit control shift P that's on windows, that will bring up the command palette. And what I can do is I can search for my tool example editor script, and that's going to appear right there. But I can also just go down to the editor scripts section, which is at the very bottom here. And if I double click this, it's going to run that tool. And if I open up the output, you can see that we've printed hello world here. So I can run GD script from the editor with my tool script. You can do a lot of stuff in here. For example, in my game Alchemortis, what I'm doing is I have a tool script that creates a bunch of resources for me based on an input name. We can go over that when I cover the Alchemortis section, but I'm gonna show you another thing that makes this editor tool very powerful is we can actually create a window with a node hierarchy with some UI elements so that we can provide some inputs to the tool if we want to and use that in whatever our tool is doing. So what we can do to do that is we can actually create a window. So I'm gonna say var window is colon equal to window.new. And what I can do from here is I can actually pop up a dialog with that window. So I can do editor interface dot pop up dialog, and I can pass my window in there. And I'm also going to need to do a rect2, which is the window size and position. So I'm just gonna set this to 100, 100 for the position. Oh, this needs to be a vector two, I'm sorry. So 100, 100 position, and then the size will do a vector two. And I'm just going to set it to 1280 by 720 because I'm on a 1440p display but you can make your window dimensions whatever you want. Now, we're gonna have a problem here. If we just run the tool script like this, we have no way of closing the window. So we actually need to handle that close request. So we need to do window.closeRequested.connect on close requested, and let's create that function on close requested. And then inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna queue free that window. Take that window reference. Now we need to store this up here actually. So let's do var window of type window and we'll remove this var here in this run line here. And we got to remove the colon equals. So now an on close request that we can do window dot q free. Okay, so here's our script. Now before I run this, what you should know is that I don't know if this is a bug on Godot 4.5 or not, but you can't actually do signal connections to the window like this. You cannot refer to another function. For some reason that doesn't work, I just tested it a bunch. I don't know why it doesn't work. It works fine in my C-sharp code, but I am doing an event style connection in C-sharp, which I will show you when I go to Alchemortis. But for now, what you can do is you can't use a callable like this, but you can pass in an anonymous function or a lambda function here, and then we can do window dot Q free here. So I don't know exactly why that doesn't work, but if we just make our code like this, then we get this. So now if I run that tool example editor script from the command palette, again with control shift and P, searching for tool, 
and I open this tool example, that pops up a window on my other monitor, but I'm gonna drag it over here so you can see it. So now we've got this empty window, and if we click the close button, the window closes. And so what this does now is this basically creates a situation where we can add a GUI to that window if we want to handle various things. So for instance, what I can do is I can go ahead and create a button and add that to the window. So if I do var button colon equals button dot new, and then I say button dot text is equal to hello, like so. And then I can do this window dot add child button. So now if I run the tool script, you can see that I've got a hello button in here that I can click and I can of course still close the window. Now let's do something else. Let's do this. Let's say button dot pressed dot connect. And this is probably not going to work, but let's go ahead and try it. So on pressed, and we'll create that funk on pressed down here. And let's just print button pressed. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's go ahead and try it. So we'll open up that tool example. If I click hello and then I go to my output, we can see that button press has worked. For some reason, we can't connect a defined function to this window close requested, but we can do it for any node that is added as a child of the window. So you can start to see maybe how constructing a UI and connecting to the signals will allow you to do certain interesting things. Now, before I show you some actual functionality that we could add to this, I also want to show you that we could load a packed scene and instantiate that and make that a child of the window. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a basic user interface node here. I'm gonna change this type to a margin container just so we have a container. You know, this is not a control tutorial, so I'm just gonna call this test scene. I'm just gonna blow through this really quick. So I've got my control here. Let's do an HBox container, and I'm gonna add a text edit here, and then I'm also going to add a button. So this is not the prettiest thing in the world. Okay, so now what I can do is I can add a script to this test here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in. I do believe we need to annotate this with a tool script as well. So generally speaking, any tool script that is gonna interact with another script both scripts have to be annotated with tool or else Godot is not going to be able to work with them. So we've got the tool script here. I'm going to grab references to these nodes by selecting those control and dragging those over. And then what I'm going to do on ready here is I'm just going to connect to that button pressed signal button dot pressed dot connect. And then in here, what I'm going to do is I'll write pass for now. Let's create a custom signal in here. So let's just call it signal confirmed, I guess. And then what we're going to do in here is we're going to do confirmed dot emit and we're gonna pass along the text edit dot text. And so let's go ahead and put that in here. So this is the text as a string. So this is a very basic setup here. Now, the next thing to do is we wanna instantiate this scene and add it to our tool script and then connect to this confirmed signal. So if I go to my tool example here, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do var GUI colon equals preload, and we're gonna preload this test here. So I'm gonna copy this test scene's UID and paste that in there. And this should give us a packed scene. And so what I can do now is instead of creating this button manually, what I can do is I can say var GUI scene colon equals GUI dot instantiate. And then we can do window dot add child GUI scene. And then what we can do is we can connect to that signal. So GUI scene dot confirmed dot connect on confirmed. We'll do func on confirmed here. This is taking in some text as a string. And let's just go ahead and print the text. I'm gonna get rid of this on pressed signal handler that is no longer used. So now if I go ahead and run my tools tool example here, what I can see is that has instantiated and loaded my scene. And now if I write hello test in here and I click confirm, I should see in the output that I've got that hello test being printed. So again, this is not a very sophisticated example, but it's a way that you can build a GUI based editor tool to do any kind of tooling operation you need to do. So I think now it's a good opportunity to go into my Alchemortis code base and show you how I'm using this to speed up my development. Okay, so here I am in my Alchemortis project. By the way, Alchemortis is available for wishlisting on Steam. So if you would wishlist that, I would appreciate it. For Alchemortis, I've created a tool called a card creation tool. So if I double click this, I get a window very similar to what I just showed you. And this sets up the resources that I need to add a new card to my game. You can see here, there are these resources under this cards directory. These are all custom resources that contain card definitions. 
So for example, here is the giant squid card and the giant squid has a display name. It's got some flavor text. It's got the art that is associated with that card as well as some other data about the card with respect to the game. And I need one of these resources for every card in the game. And so I can create a custom resource by going to create new resource card definition resource. But then I have to set up a bunch of boilerplate stuff. And so to increase the speed of iteration here, what I do is I have this card creation tool. And in here, I'll just call this demo test and I create. And what that does is that creates a demo test resource for me. So if I open up this demo test now, I can see that the name is already filled in and I can also extend that tool to fill in any of these other things for me. But the other thing that this does is if I go into my VS code here, again, this is a C sharp project, but if I go into my VS code, I'll notice that a demo test script has been created. So every one of my cards, in addition to having a card definition resource, custom resource also needs to have a class with the file name being the same as the resource name, but in Pascal case. So you can see that this created a script called demo test in Pascal case rather than snake case. And this has some basic setup for me that I need for all of my cards. So all of my cards need to extend base card and they all need to accept card definition resource in the constructor. And that's how all of them look. And so that card creation tool creates the resource for me and creates the script for me. So I don't have to do that stuff manually. So now looking at the card creation tool itself, here's what's going on in here. So again, this is C sharp, but if you're familiar with programming, it should be pretty easy to understand. So here's that overriding of that run function that I showed you in GD script. And I am just manually adding some nodes. I'm adding a button and a text edit here. But what happens when I press the button here is that this will take that text from the text edit and it will try to create the card resources with that name. So in here, what's interesting about this is that this is actually using the file system to determine number one, if a card resource with that name already exists, but number two, to load the card definition resource, to duplicate that resource, and then to set up the properties of that resource. Now I'm using reflection here because of something we don't need to get into. Basically all of my resource definitions in here have a private setter. So I want to keep that private so I can't change it during the normal course of the game. But for a tool script, I just bypass that by using reflection. That's not that important, but you can see that I am setting the display name and I'm setting some other basic properties here. And then with that duplicated card definition resource, I can then use the resource saver, which is a built-in Godot class to save that new resource to the path that corresponds to its name. So this chunk of code right here is how it created a card definition resource with the name demo test and put it in my file system. And then I'm doing a similar thing. I'm loading up a C sharp script. I'm replacing some text to change the class name and everything. And then I am saving that file using the file access functionality in Godot. So that's basically it. This entire block of code, it creates that card definition resource and it creates the C sharp script in accordance with the name that I supplied through that tool UI here. So that's super useful. Now I can tell you how I'm planning to extend this to give you some ideas, but that's basically what you need to know. You can create scenes, add them to a window, and then you can do a bunch of manipulation of resources to improve your workflow. You can also print things to the output. For example, I have another tool called card statistics tool. And when I run that, what that does is that just gives me a basic output here that tells me how many cards of each tag exist for both the enemy and for the players. It's a good way for me to keep track of how many of each type of card I have. And then I also have this extra utility here that tells me if any of my cards are missing the flavor text configuration so that I can go in and add that because I routinely forget to add the flavor text to the card. And so having this here to let me know that some cards are missing that text is much easier than trying to click through all of these and see what is missing what, right? I could extend this to set up a sprite files for me because I can access the file system. So my plan for the future is to create a template a sprite file that has the same name and the same path as the name that I supply in the card creation tool. So that way all of my 
requisite files are being created at the same time. I don't have to do that manually. It makes my job a lot easier and a lot more fun too. I hope you like this very quick tutorial. I hope that this opens some doors for you, gives you some ideas of how you can create tools for your own project. And again, I would appreciate it if you check out Alchemortis on Steam, wishlist it if it's a kind of game that you're interested in, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to support my work, please consider wishlisting Alchemortis on Steam, subscribing to my Patreon, joining the Discord server, or purchasing one of my courses. You can also sign up for my email list at firebelly.com. The links for everything are in the description below.